This is Tamar Hussein reading for reviewer Mike Epstein. Returnal very clearly draws elements from roguelikes, souls-likes, metroidvanias, action platformers, bullet hell shooters, and horror games. But while it borrows from all those genres, its unique flow ensures that its chaotic shooting galleries and creepy storytelling feel decidedly new. Returnal's many moving parts coalesce into a rare shooter that grabs you with its mechanics and its story and never lets go, seducing you with its challenges and a foreboding sense of dread every step of the way. When you start Returnal, Interstellar scout Selene Vassos crash lands on an alien planet, Atropos, which is broadcasting a mysterious signal. Stranded, Selene makes some startling discoveries on the planet, including the game's titular trait. When she dies, Selene returns to the crash site, seemingly unharmed. To explain much more would give away too much. You want to know as little about Returnal and its story as you can going in. Yes, Return is in the name, which is a not so subtle nod to Returnal's run based structure. It falls into the broader definition of roguelite. Selene starts each run from the crash site but holds a few key upgrades and one of two in game currencies from run to run. Everything else, including her weapons, artifacts that provide passive upgrades, and consumables like healing items, disappear with each death. Selene wanders through the procedurally arranged and populated landscape of Atropos hoarding gear, upgrading her health and weapon level, and gunning down the planet's strange looking, tentacle wiggling creatures, all of which want you dead. Most of your enemies have the ability to shoot some kind of bright, colourful projectile at you. In a large combat arena, the room very quickly fills with a gauntlet of neon orbs and beams of light for you to sidestep, jump over and dash through. Each enemy species has its own bullet type with a predictable pattern to learn, but when you put four or more together, even the simple enemies can create complex, beautiful light shows that will put you down if you aren't at the top of your game. Unlike most bullet hell shooters, where you're looking down from overhead, Returnal puts projectiles in your face and makes you react quickly and gracefully. That can be a challenge. Sometimes the number of bright beams and orbs on the screen gets so unwieldy that it can feel impossible to keep up. Returnal's combat mechanics reward players who can perfectly dodge enemy attacks while keeping their composure. With every kill, Selene builds up adrenaline, which provides temporary bonuses like a more powerful melee attack and a glowing aura that makes enemies easier to see so long as you don't take damage. There's also an active reload mechanic, which helps you dish out as much bullet hell as you take. Given the ridiculous number of bullets you have to avoid at any given time, it can be tough to work in a quick reload between dodges. In fact, it pays to know when to skip a reload, rather than risk delaying your next attack. More importantly, it's an easy and very tangible way to see your skills improve run to run. Selene can find a small but nicely varied array of guns for herself, as well as artifacts, which offer passive upgrades. Her arsenal ranges from classic pistols and assault rifles to the Electro Pylon Driver, which fires posts that generate laser beams between them, allowing you to trap an enemy in a deadly laser grid. Each weapon type also comes with randomly assigned perks, which you unlock by killing enemies and which persist across runs. As your weapon level grows, the weapons you find have better stats, along with more and better perks. And you always have a sword, which lets you disable enemy shields and can quickly dispatch enemies who get in close. When you have a strong understanding of your tools, you can find a rhythm for working any combat scenario that's specific to your build. Not every upgrade is entirely a blessing. Many of the items and chests you'll find will be malignant, so picking up or opening them will incur a temporary penalty until you complete an objective. For example, you may do half as much damage with your sword until you use two consumable items, like a temporary shield or a healing item. You also find parasites, which impose both an upgrade and a debuff, and can't be switched out without a special item or a device found in the world. While you can simply avoid any items with potential negative impact, it's hard to build up power without them. So the quest to make a winning build often forces you to make some smart compromises and occasionally roll the dice to increase your prowess. This wide range of weapons and gear is both a blessing and a curse. On the one hand, you'll never have to run the same strategy twice. On the other, your success is largely contingent on finding the right stuff. This is true in most roguelites to some degree, but it's especially prevalent here. 
When you have the right gear, you're unstoppable. When you don't, you may struggle to make even incremental progress. You also have to flex your beam dodging skills with a fair amount of complex platforming. Many rooms will tempt you with items guarded by laser grids or long trails of small platforms. Returnal's controls are tight and responsive, so you'll have the tools you need to navigate even when the time is extremely tight, assuming you have the precision and reflexes to master them. Having traps, obstacles, and hidden rooms to find in every run means the act of exploring never feels wasted or boring. You're always desperate for more health or that next upgrade, and even when you come to know the shape of every prefab room, there's always a sense that you don't know what might be around the next corner. Though they change with every life, each of Returnal's zones follows a loose basic structure with a main path and branching side paths. On your first time through each zone, you'll come across a barrier on the main path that you can't breach, either because you need a key or a movement ability you don't have. This will lead you down a secondary main path that, once completed, you will not need to repeat on future runs. The result is a shifting and changing micro run. To reach the next objective, you'll need to play through the next two to four hours of the game without dying to advance the story, but you won't need to complete every step on a winning run. This creates a balance between the endurance-based challenge of the traditional roguelite, where you not only need to succeed, but do so well enough that you can continue on, and the extreme challenge put forth by the bullet hell style shooting galleries you have to conquer. It also opens the door for Returnal's many challenging boss fights, which, in typical Souls-like fashion, ask you to fight giant, daunting enemies that can literally fill the screen with waves of attacks that are as beautiful as they are deadly. No matter the challenge, progress always feels attainable, removing some of the sting of the repetitive, unforgiving nature of the run-based structure. Moreover, on a narrative level, mixing up your objectives helps create a sort of fog around your goals. You always know the way forward, but what you're actually doing changes over time. Between the shifting maps and the ever-changing objectives, you're never quite sure where you're headed, which feels nerve-wracking. That doesn't necessarily mean you're lost, the way forward is almost always clear, but your lack of awareness fosters a general sense of confusion that amplifies this undercurrent of discomfort that washes over you while exploring Atropos. Returnal is consistently spooky and occasionally terrifying. You don't get much about Selene, the planet, or why she's there early on, but the mystery is constantly at the forefront of your mind. You receive a drip feed of information from run to run through audio logs, monologues, and cutscenes, which you find by exploring the different rooms that pop up as you make it closer and closer to your goal. Returnal uses that lack of information aggressively, frequently showing you images and referencing events for which you have little to no context, all in service of creating a slippery understanding of Selene, a nightmarish impression of Atropos, and a mystique around the true nature of your mission. I know why they became severed. Divine punishment for failing ascension. Ascension. No sooner has the word escaped my lips than a vast image of the transcendent watcher in the deep below consumes my mind. I have begun having visions of where I have yet to go. They lead me continually downwards from Olympus and into myself. I alone am worthy. What happened to her? That is not me. The horror of Returnal is largely sequestered to the narrative of the game, but there are a handful of playable story sequences where it comes through front and center. From time to time, Selene will find an area with her home from Earth, a literal American house just sitting in the middle of the wilderness. When the time is right and she enters the house, you're put into a short first person sequence that focuses on narrative and mood. You have no guns, no real control of what to do, and you're subjected to some spooky events that teach you more about the world while sending shivers down your spine. This was taken after I left. Why? Returnal is constantly unsettling and consistently challenging. Its mysterious story and demanding action feels intense, urgent, and fresh. The fast-moving combat manages to appear incredibly daunting, bordering on overwhelming, without actually ever becoming insurmountable. Every moment is a rush, either because you just barely evaded a giant purple laser, or because you have no idea why there's an Apollo-era astronaut following your every move. Do you need to be a little brave to play Returnal? Yeah. Do you need to be a glutton for punishment? It helps. They say that anything worth doing should scare you just a little bit. I'm not sure if that's always true, but Returnal makes a strong case for it. I 
have to try harder. 